there was definitely a, a hole in my life because I needed to do something with my hands. That's just yeah. like a need I have. Yeah. So doing the art with my son was a way to be, you know, doing that. So I loved it so much and he loved it initially, but at a certain point he was not so interested anymore. And I was like, well, I guess I should be doing my own art then if this is something that he doesn't want to do, but I still want to do it. Welcome Karen Arben from Sketchbook Revival to Vintage Page Designs. We are thrilled to have you here. Thank you so much for inviting me, Ali. It's wonderful to be here. So I know everyone knows you, Karen, as like the figurehead of Sketchbook Revival, but I wonder how many folks sort of know you personally. It feels like you spend a lot of time promoting like other artists and lifting them up and you're kind of behind the scenes, behind the camera. So I wonder if you could perhaps give folks a little bit of an insight to um, like your creative journey, whether you grew up in a creative household or you really didn't, and sort of how you got from over there to over here been doing Sketchbook Revival today, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, that's a big, long, windy road. That's great. I'm definitely, I'll give you some highlights. And, and first of all, yes, I love uplifting um, others. Yes. <laughs> I love I like the introvert type. So the fact that I'm even doing this work is really quite hilarious, I have to say. <laughs> I hear you. I never imagined I would be doing something like this because I'm definitely not the center of attention kind of person, which is why it comes so naturally for me to do something like Sketchbook Revival because I love connecting and finding others and sharing and all that. But I also do have a passion for creativity, obviously, of my own. Otherwise, I wouldn't be so passionate about Sketchbook Revival because I consider myself the number one student of the whole experience. You know, it's like the thing that I want to learn and improve too. As a kid, I was definitely creative. I was not, I, I wouldn't say my family wasn't uncreative, but I, nobody was making art, like that's for sure. Mm. And it, was the thing that I really enjoyed doing as a child. I liked drawing and taking pottery class and, you know, getting little how-to art books that taught you how to do calligraphy with Crayola markers. And then eventually, I think I started doing things like collages for my friends and handmade cards for my family and those kind of things. And then, and yeah, as I got older, I kind of sought out opportunities to learn more things about art yeah but did you did you graduate college and like launch yourself into an art career or did you come to it through a roundabout way yeah so I kind of more of a roundabout way while I always love being creative I, I don't think I ever thought of being an artist like making that my career I think I was more inclined to like academic kind of things yeah I don't that was my family background or whatever, but I was definitely, yeah, kind of more into like getting good grades and like figuring out what my career would be and that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. I ended up taking a course in high school, uh, art and art history course, which was like a new offering at the time. Yeah. And I totally fell in love with art history. And that really, I could imagine myself, you know, working in a museum and things like that, being a curator. Yeah. So I was kind of pursuing that direction and along the way I didn't think I could should major in art history but I ended up minoring in art history okay. I majored in literature and then I took a lot of studio art classes for fun oh interesting <laughs> then at a certain point I discovered this amazing field called art conservation mm. and I was like oh that sounds amazing because you're actually working with your hands and you're caring for art collections and museums yeah. and you're kind of combining your knowledge about art history and how art is made and learning about science and like being creative in a certain way because you're kind of working mm. on art and doing different cool things to preserve them. Yeah. So that's what I ended up pursuing as a career. And I, you yeah. know, had to get, that was a whole um, journey in, in and of itself because it was difficult to get trained as an art conservator. But yeah. I figured it out and I ended up going to graduate school for that. Yeah doing that for quite a few years. And then working in museums was really fun because then I discovered a lot of people who work in museums are also artists and they're doing different jobs in museums. So it was a very creative community working in museums. I discovered a lot of interesting people. I met a lot of interesting people who were also artists. And they were like, they had sketchbooks, you know, just to, that was like my first time also in art class I did in, in college. I remember I had to have a sketchbook for one of my classes. Yeah. 
But then I never used it after that. And then um, I had some colleagues who were really into sketchbooks. And then we would go out and sketch sometimes, you know, in different places. Oh, and they were really into it. But I would just kind of dabble, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. So, yeah, I mean, art conservation. I, I, I remember years ago I looked into that. There's like a lot of chemistry. It is not – that's not an easy field. What types of art were you conserving? <laughs> No, I ended up falling in love with objects conservation, which is anything three dimensional in the United States. In Europe, it's much more specialized. In the United States, objects is like anything 3D, which encompasses like archaeological materials and ethnographic materials. So that was what I fell in love with was anthropological collections. Ooh. So because I also love to travel. So I was imagining like going on digs and working um, on objects in the field and things like that. So that was sort of the thing that really excited me. And that's what I ended up doing. And that's how I met my husband, who's an archaeologist. Oh, really? Yeah. And ended up, you know, in Italy. So <laughs> really oh, random. Oh, wow. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> so which museums did you work at? Or museum? I don't know if it's one or multiple ones in multiple museums because there's different stages you do internships you know at the beginning and you get and then you kind of you know get your first jobs I kind of had a home base in New York City and I was work like my I worked at the American Museum of Natural History Ooh. I worked at the Brooklyn Museum and I worked at the Metropolitan Museum those are like the three big museums of New York City well there's many there's more but those are th three of the big ones <laughs> that's amazing who I mean who would think from like being an art conservator of like uh, ancient objects to like sketchbook revival. One of my questions was, how did you end up in Italy? Well, I think you kind of just answered that. How long, how many years have you lived there now? I've lived here. I, I first moved here in 2001. I was here for three or four years. Um, then I ended up moving because my husband had a job in, in Turkey Ooh. for a year. Like, I'm not going to, I was living in Rome at the time. And I was like, I'm not going to stay here if he's off in Turkey. So I ended up finding a job in Athens and Greece and spent uh, a, about, no, I guess not quite a year there, but between Turkey, I was in Turkey too, then I was in Athens. Then we got, we went back to the US after three, four years. And mm. then, and then yeah. eventually my husband ended up getting a job in, in Sicily, which is where he's from originally. So that's what brought us back here because, you know, one of us had to lead the way and I had just had, we just had a child. So I was kind of into the idea of taking a little break and, you know, being a mama. So yeah. we moved to Sicily when our son was one. And yeah. um, yeah, and that, that was now um, almost 16 years ago. I mean, what a journey, though. Does travel still play like a big part of your life? Or since having kids, have you kind of been a little more settled in? More settled in, less travel, but still, yeah, definitely going at least home to the States once a year. Europe is so nice because you can travel pretty easily. You can have adventures without having to go, you know, across the globe. Yeah. Um, that's a wonderful thing about Europe. So that's great. So yeah, little trips here and there. And then husband still, you know, is an archaeologist still and has excavations. And while I'm not doing conservation so much anymore, I do help him on his projects. And so he yeah. goes to interesting places because his, his background is in Near Eastern archaeology. So mm. Mesopotamia, basically. So he works in very interesting countries and I get to go, um, we usually go as a family, you know, and, and have these fun adventures, which is why the summers aren't a great time for me to be doing Sketchbook Arrival <laughs> or other awesome things. <laughs> oh my gosh. So when was it born and like, how was it born? Yeah, that's such a good question, Allie. Um, I love it. So yeah, so when I, so, so here I am in Sicily as a young mama, youngish mama. I wasn't that young when I had my son, but youngish mama and um i was definitely having fun but also i was working in some local excavations i wasn't working that much let's say i was being a mama and trying to work a little bit in conservation too i noticed that my son was not having a lot of fun in his preschool because they were very kind of old-fashioned the way they were teaching creativity and art to the children mm. and would get super frustrated and like throw his crayon across the room and that kind of thing. And I was like, oh my, what's going on here? He says this is supposed to be fun. It's all about getting messy. And you know, there's not nothing like coloring in the lines at age three. So I decided to um, kind of supplement that by forming a little art group with other mamas um, that I met through the school. 
Yeah. And we started hanging out and I would, I started researching these creative ideas online and that's blogs were really big back then. So yeah. I found really cool blogs about this topic and, you know, teach people sharing ideas for teaching children creativity and the process oriented approach. Yeah. So I started doing those kinds of things with my son and other mamas and their kids. Yeah. And it was so fun. I got kind of reignited my, uh, my creative urges because I wasn't doing that much art conservation work. And that work, I think, fulfilled my need to work with my hands because it's very manual. Yeah. And not doing that a lot, there was definitely a, a hole in my life because I needed to do something with my hands. That's just yeah. like a need I have. Yeah. So doing the art with my son was a way to be, you know, doing that. So I loved it so much. And he loved it initially. But at a certain point, he was not so interested anymore. And I was like, well, I guess I should be doing my own art then if this is something that he doesn't want to do, but I still want to do it. Yeah. So I started on my own kind of search for different creative outlets, mm. everything from, you know, handmade gifts to like intuitive painting classes. Like I took my first online classes as a student for various reasons. I don't know I could, how much detail you, you want, but at a certain point. My husband um, gifted me a digital device. It was a little phone, which wasn't so little back then. It was a phone, yeah. like a, it's called Samsung. No, I don't know. It was about that big. Yeah. And it had a little um, stylus with it. And then you could draw on it. And I'd never really thought about digital drawing in my no. whole life. The idea never crossed my mind. Yeah. But he's like, oh, I think you might like this. I was like, I don't know if I'd like to draw mm -hmm. digital. This yeah. Matter. I don't know, but I'll give it a try. So I tried it and I fell in love with it. I was like so into drawing on this phone and I spent about two years like practically every day drawing something on this little phone. And even though it was tiny, you could like kind of like an iPad is now Yeah, I'm using Procreate, but it was like the precursor to that and you could blow it up. So yeah. even though on a tiny screen, you could get really detailed and do really cool things. And I started doing things like making t-shirts for my son and I, you know, making cards, the things I would do when I was a kid, you know, cards yeah. for my loved ones and things like that. I would just draw things or, and then I started drawing things for my environment as well. I was having some difficult times because I had, you know, some people dying in my family. And um, mm. so I, think it was, I was also in the, the healing modality of like, or like an outlet to help me survive uh, traumas and stuff of, you know, losing and grief and all this. That was the thing that kind of got me to this place of like, I think I want to pursue art, you know, and kind of take a break with art conservation. So yeah. that led me to, it's experimenting with different things and kind of uh, starting to share my art with people where I lived. And then I did a little exhibit at a a studio and I started collaborating with my yoga teacher and making t-shirts for her studio and all kinds of things like that. So yeah. I was like, Hey, okay, what else can I do? And this was all kind of digital stuff that I was in. And I was like, this is cool. Like I could do illustration or design. Like I didn't know anything about the field because I'd never studied it. I was just kind of picking it up. I, I felt like I needed some support and I found that there was this, um, I somehow, the first summits were happening at the time that I discovered. And I remember Ooh. I participated in a summit that was about creativity. Yeah. And that's how I met Amber Quilemani Benici, who then became my mentor. I joined her creativity group. This was like in 2017. Yeah. And um, it was like a year program. And it was basically like people doing all kinds of creativity, but really just like working together to birth, you know, your thing that you want to birth and put out in the world. Yeah. And I didn't really have a specific plan other than just like abundant artist, you know, like that's yeah. sort of my vision. And then from there, one of the things that she taught was how to do a summit because she runs a summit called Woman Unleashed. And I liked her summit. I thought it was really cool. You know, hers is all about like being on a retreat and like kind of nourishment, you know. Yeah. In, in different ways, but I, I never thought, and creativity, because she's also does love creativity. And I never thought I would do a summit, but then I thought, well, maybe I'll just look into like I, this little thing. I had this little thing inside of me that I think wanted to do it, even though I didn't think I wanted to do it. One of the things that she offered was you kind of like create your vision for your summit. And so I thought, well, I'll just watch this session and see what comes. And so I, I did this visioning process. Yeah. And then that sketchbook arrival came it was just like this thing that it came with the thing that I wanted to learn because you know there are the online challenges going on already yeah, yeah. I was 
and working on my illustration, kind of taking different classes, like seeing all these amazing sketchbooks that people were doing, but not really sure how to do one myself because I kind of try and then I quit. Mm. And yeah. I'm like, like, I need to learn from these artists. It's just amazing what they're doing. And I would love to have that kind of growth in my own art practice, like kind of like the art practice kind of yeah. foundation, and like the thing that sketchbook um, symbolized for me. Yeah. So I was like, how do you do that? And like, how do you establish that? And I just wanted to learn and try something new. And then I had this support system where I could like, you know, yeah. put together an event, but not like do it on my own. Otherwise, I never would have done it for sure. That's how it happened. So essentially, you were creating a summit for something that you wanted to learn. It wasn't that you were already this expert in how to create amazing sketchbooks or, or you know, sort of work in a sketchbook. You, it was actually something that you wanted. I had no idea if anybody else would be into this, honestly. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. But yes, it was the idea. And yeah. then I remember coming out with a name and I was like, the, the initial name was Sketchbook Revive. And then Amber suggested Revival. And I was like, oh yeah, that's Revival, that's better. And yeah. then like, the I just loved the name so much. It got me so excited. <laughs> and it's kind of interesting, Revival, given your um, art conservation background. So. I, it's so funny. It's so funny. Oh. And then, then when I started looking online, because I wasn't interested in, in starting an online business at the time, um, yeah. per se. Um, but I saw that there were a lot of people doing things related to sketchbooks and just art practice. And yeah. and I think I got the idea for the diversity because that's kind of the thing I think that for me, sketchbook is not like the traditional way of using a sketchbook per se. Not that that isn't valuable and amazing, mm -hmm. but it's not only like going out in the world and sketching mm -hmm. in your sketchbook. That's one way of using it. I was curious about all the ways because mm -hmm. I think artists from different backgrounds use it differently you know and so i was curious about all the ways because i'm one of those very multi-passionate people i want to learn all the things before i make my choice i like yeah. a little bit of everything and i, I didn't know if that would work you know for but but there are people who like that because i think one of the things about art is experimentation is something that's really valuable no matter what you decide you want to focus on once in a while I, even once a year you know you can come yeah. and experiment and play and just yeah. like give yourself that permission to just try new things. And then that's where the little sparks come and new ideas sprout and then you discover new stuff and it's very magical. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, so what year did it begin? 2018 was the first year. Okay. 2018. Is it, and is it exactly the same as it is today or has it evolved over time? I think it's evolved. I mean, definitely in terms of um, my personal confidence in running this kind of event because the yeah. first year I definitely did not know what I was doing or did not know what I had got myself into yeah. did not know how much work was involved yeah. and did not feel comfortable with any of the technology so it was like very stressful but very exhilarating mm -hmm. at the time so now that part is I'm much more comfortable personally with all of that mm -hmm. and even if there are new things to learn I'm much more comfortable learning the new things because yeah. I just that's part of the process. Yeah. So personally, I've grown a lot, but also in terms of the vision, I mean, the vision is more or less the same, but I like to experiment with different things each year. I think it's just that need, you know, you want to always improve. I like to improve it every year as if I can. Yeah. So it's more of like a personal challenge, like how can I make it better? I use the feedback I get from the participants and from the yeah. Um, of the speakers and myself seeing what works what doesn't work mm -hmm. so it's always like, tweaking it and trying to make it a better experience for everyone and I think it, it's leaned into more like fun experimentation and kind of loosening up is more yeah. that it's grown in that direction whereas initially it was like practice and momentum well I, I just actually I think I feel like a little remiss actually let's just say someone is watching this and doesn't know what sketchbook revival? Do you want to just quickly in a couple sentences explain what it is? Because I'm making the assumption that everyone knows. Sketchbook revival is a several week event that is an opportunity to learn different ways of creating in a sketchbook where artists from different backgrounds mm -hmm. share, like, you know, their, their favorite way, their go-to way, or their current ideas around how to use a book. And it's not only a sketchbook, it's also an art journal or a bullet journal. You know, there's different ways people use their books and it's sort of like anything goes. You know, I try and do different things so that people can experiment more and more and with different mediums and techniques and yeah. learn 
new ways of, you know, new things that they can incorporate into their art practice. And any experience level is welcome because there are complete beginners and there are professional artists taking this, um, this you know, taking the workshop. So mm. it's really adaptable to all levels. And that's really the idea of just like, you know, open to everyone and, you know, no pressure. It's really just about playing and having fun and exploring your creativity and seeing what, what magic happens for you personally and hopefully getting inspired to then continue on exploring. Yeah. That's, that's really the idea behind Sketchbook Revival. It is free. So free. you don't yeah. have to pay for it to join. And, and that has created a really um, inclusive, mm -hmm. generous, kind-hearted spirit for the whole event that I'm so grateful for. I just love that. That's like the best part is that it really does have a positive energy to it. I love that. Yeah, I, I was going to say when you're saying all of this, I was just thinking, and it's free. I mean, I know there is like a, towards the end, there's, you know, there's an option to extend, but really this is a free offering that you put out into the world and it's it's a gift. It really is. I know people who do it year after year 